All right, what's going on everyone? Well, today we are here at the junkyard. We are trying to find a rear trailing arm for our cords. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, this right here is Daniel, AKA Coco, a new member of Doughboy's Garage. Uh, so we both have an accord we're building for the track. We're here at uh, the junkyard trying to find the trailing arms. We are going through the import section right now trying to find their cords. Yeah, let's see what we can find. Okay, so we found one of the EX Accords and Coco is right here checking to make sure everything's all good, copacetic and straight. Uh, we're gonna take this off and then we're just gonna go ahead and try to find another one for his car. Fucking shit. Just keep spinning? Yeah, I'm pushing. The thing is, I left my torch up. I'm in the truck. I think I need it. All right, guys, we are back from the junkyard, and as you can see, we got the rear trailing arm set up from an EX, so now I am going rear disc brake conversion. Uh, a lot of you guys are probably wondering, because you've seen Gears and Gasoline saying, oh, well, you know, they say you don't need uh, rear brakes, which is technically true. Most of the braking is done on the uh, front wheels, uh, but what they don't take into account is how hot uh, the rear uh, drums can get because it's basically just an enclosed case and that can lead to much quicker uh, brake fade and brake wear uh, that you just really don't want on the track uh, especially on like uh, hard braking tracks at MSR out here in Houston I probably don't have to worry about it too much but you know those Cali tracks are uh, high speeds uh, pretty hard braking so I just went ahead and got this for like uh, 200 bucks for both everything I need uh, I also bought a set of SPC rear camber arms, so I'm going to go ahead and take that off and put these on. Uh, I went ahead and got the bent version, uh, because if you get the straight version and your car is lowered, it's just going to bend over time, it's not going to work as well. So you might as well get the pre-bent one that's uh, strengthened to stay in this form. So that's real easy, you just got to take off this 10, uh, this blocker right here that keeps the nut from... Uh, possibly backing out you take out the cotter pin you take out this nut you take that out and replace it I'm gonna do that real quick you guys don't need to see that I don't believe okay you know what I changed my mind I'm just gonna show you real quick just in case um, so to get this off you just need a 10 millimeter uh, socket or whatever take off the uh, extra guard which is a good thing that's there because the cotter pin that was on here actually was rusted and the second I touched it it just basically crumbled in my hands so that's why it is a good thing to have that stop so next you're gonna to want to take your 17 and your impact oh, and then just hammer this off okay. hopefully this comes right out nope I'm gonna to have to get a hammer I'll be right back Okay, with your hammer, you just want to take a few wax right here at the metal part. Hopefully, it can come loose with just a few wax. Oh. Okay. Well, that was easy. Just uh, one really hard whack to the correct spot. And the uh, upper control arm came loose. Okay, so you take your brand new one. Go ahead and put that in. Take the supplied nut. Tighten that up to where it clears, and uh, yeah, there you have it, your brand new adjustable camber arm. All right guys, so putting on the rear trailing arm is just gonna be as simple as putting on the uh, adjustable camber arm up here. You just basically gotta take off these two bolts right there, holding up the control arm. I believe they are 17s, maybe 14s. 17s or 14s, uh, two bolts 
down here. So one right there, one right there. Then you got to take off this right here or right here, depending on what your rear trailer arm came with. Mine came with this arm right here. So I'm just going to be taking it off right there. Take off that one right there. Take off the bolt for the uh, strut. And if you're doing coilovers, now would be a good time to go ahead and swap those over. I will be doing that, but I will be showing that full video in next week's video. But for right now, I'm just going to be showing you the trailing arm install. So yeah, very minimal. Oh yeah, you also have to fish out your e-brake lines. Uh, so you're going to want to go ahead and uh, pull those out, go inside, take it off from the e-brake handle, unbolt them, and that should come off as a whole assembly. So, yeah, what do you say we get rid of these drums and put on the rear disc brakes? All right, so the two uh, bolts holding up the upper control arm up here are actually two 14s. I'm going to do first is I'm just going to go ahead and start uh, tightening up the, uh, the line for the shape of steel line.
Okay, now that I have the coilover up and installed, I'm gonna go ahead and put on the uh, rear disc trailing arm. All right, that does it for the e-brake cable. Now all you have to do is uh, bolt that part back up and uh, reattach your uh, new stainless steel line and you are good to go. So yeah, that is basically it. That is how you do a rear disc brake conversion. I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here, do the other side. But uh, so stay tuned for the next video, which will be the coilover install. Until next time guys, later.